Hi, it's Sam, back with another bundle of joy in the form of an iOS 10 screencast. I'm going to take a look at the enhancements that Xcode 8 has added to the View Debugger. As ever, I've got a sample app, which is a really simple table view, but notice how it's not got any content in the cells. That's a bit of a problem. I'm going to take a look at how I can use the View Debugger to debug auto layout constraints, even if, for some crazy reason, I've decided to make them in code rather than using Interface Builder. To start the view debugger, I select this button in the debug bar. This reveals an exploded 3D visualization of the view hierarchy of the app in its current state. It's got standard controls so I can zoom in and zoom out, and I can select the different views in the hierarchy. I know that for this app, I created a custom UI table view cell, and within that, there's a custom Kaloji label. Hopefully, by looking through the view hierarchy in the view debugger, I'll be able to find out exactly where the problem is. Over in the left hand panel you can see the view hierarchy. I'm going to select the Kaloji label which then gets selected within the exploded view. You can see on the right hand side the constraints that affect the current view, noticing here that both the height and width have constraints that set them to zero. This isn't something that I added when I designed the cell, so it's likely that this is something that's been added automatically from the auto resizing mask. Switching to the other inspector reveals the name of the class that represents this view. I can then use the project navigator to find that file that holds that class and notice straight away that when setting up constraints I forgot to set translates auto resizing mask into constraints to false. Build and run again you can see that the table view now contains the cells as you'd expect. Jumping back to the view debugger you can see that in the exploded view all of the cells appear as expect and the zero size constraints have been removed. In addition to finding problems with existing layouts, the view debugger is really helpful when you're trying to build new layouts up as well, particularly if you're building them using code rather than interface builder. I'm going to take a look at this view controller which displays a specific emoji or colour when you tap on it from within the table view controller. As you can see at the moment, this view controller is completely blank, but I want to display a large emoji right in the centre of that view. This is the Kaloji view controller, the class that's responsible for that currently blank page. The layout for emoji function gets called whenever it needs to draw to render an emoji. First, I'm going to create a new UI label using the default constructor called emoji label, and I'm going to add that emoji label as a subview of the view controller's view with the view.add subview emoji label function. Now I'm going to set the text on that emoji label to equal the emoji that was passed into the function before then setting the emoji to be big enough by setting the font with a particular size using uifont.systemfont of size 100. Then, in order to avoid the problem that I had originally with the table view cell, I'm going to set translates auto resizing mask into constraints to be false, before then going ahead and creating the constraints that I want to create using nslayoutconstraint.activate and passing in an array of constraints. First up, the emoji label dot center x anchor needs to be equal to the center x anchor of the view itself. So we'll do center x anchor dot constraint equal to view dot center x anchor. A comma after that, because we're going to move on to the next one in the array. Next up, emoji label dot width anchor is going to have a constraint equal to the width of the view itself. Now build and run, find a cell with an emoji in it to check out what it looks like. It's not quite right, so I'm going to use the view debugger again and notice that Xcode found some runtime issues. It says that the vertical position is ambiguous and if you look over on the right hand side you can see why. We've got the width, the height and the center x but nothing relating to the y. I've managed to get the label that contains the emoji to appear on the screen but it's not in the right place. It's telling me that it's not vertically aligned correctly. If I take a look at the constraints then I can see that I'm missing something that specifies the y position. I'm going to add a new constraint that positions the emoji label right in the center of the view. I need to add one more constraint to my list of constraints that position the emoji label and that is to say that the center Y anchor should be exactly the same as the center Y for the view. Once again, build and run and let's see what it looks like now. If I scroll and the color ones still look fine, and I scroll and find an emoji one, you can see well it's positioned it but it's not centered it. That's because of the text alignment so I'm going to jump in and set the emoji label dot text alignment to be the center and now once again if I build and run, find an emoji cell, click on it and you can see that the emoji is now centered within the view. That wraps up everything that I really want to take a look at in terms of enhancements within the view debugger within Xcode 8. There's some really powerful stuff in there and it makes debugging your auto layout far simpler even if you decide to use code rather than the far simpler way of using interface builder. I really hope you've enjoyed today's screencast and I will see you in another one soon, promise, sure, bye bye.